Hey everyone, 8 -Bit Flashback here, and today I'm going to show you how to mod your Nintendo Classic Edition so you can add the complete library of Nintendo games, and I'm also going to show you how to install RetroArch so you can play games from systems like Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, Game Boy, and more. And I recently just purchased the re-release of the Nintendo Classic Edition, and that's what I'm going to be modding today, but this should work on all Nintendo Classic Editions. So let's get started. So the first step is going to be to download the newest version of Pack Chi, and I will have all these links down below. And right now we're on version 2.30, and when you click on that link, it's automatically going to take you to the newest version available. So I clicked on the Hack Chi 2.30 zip file, and then I'm going to save that to my desktop, and you can save it wherever you want, but I'd recommend keeping all your files together so you can keep everything nice and organized. Now this next step is going to be optional. This is to install RetroArch, so if you want to play games from other systems like Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, etc., you're going to want to download RetroArch. So we're going to click on this link right here, and that's going to open up a new page. And then there's a couple different options for downloads. Uh, what we want to use is the RetroArch with Core Zip. These other files here are more for advanced users, and I might talk about that more in a future tutorial. So I'm going to click on the RetroArch with Core Zip, and then save that to the desktop with my other file. So now I'm going to head to my desktop, and here's a look at the two files I just downloaded. We downloaded HackChi, and then we also downloaded RetroArch. And these are both archive files. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the HackChi archive. And inside there is going to be a HackChi2 folder, and I want to go ahead and extract that to the desktop. So to extract it, I'm just going to drag that HackChi2 folder to my desktop. Once it's done extracting, I'm going to go ahead and open that up and we're gonna click on the HackChi application. So the first time you use HackChi, it's gonna greet you with a screen asking you which system you have, and we have the NES Classic Edition US version, so that's what I'm gonna click on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and reorganize my windows so I can see everything a little bit better. On the right is gonna be the HackChi2 application, and then on the left is gonna be the HackChi2 folder. So the first step we're gonna to wanna to do is dump the kernel from the Nintendo Classic Edition. So I'm gonna click on the kernel tab, and then select dump kernel. It's going to ask, do you want to dump kernel? Yes, I do. Now it's going to give you a couple steps to follow. And the first thing you want to do is make sure your Nintendo is in the powered off position. Then you want to connect it to a computer with a USB cable. Then you want to hold that reset button while you push the power button. And then continue to hold the reset button for about five seconds. And this is going to put it in FEL mode so we can communicate with the HackG2 program. And here's an example of how to do it. So I have my Nintendo Classic Edition in the powered off position. Now I'm going to connect it with the USB cable to my computer. Now I'm going to hold the reset button on the Classic Edition and then push power and I can let go of power but continue to hold the reset button for about 5 seconds. So now I'm booted into FEL mode or FEL mode, whatever you want to call it and now we can continue on. So once you have your Classic into FEL mode, Windows might automatically try to install a driver but that's not going to be the correct one. So what you want to do is click on the install driver located right here. And this is an important step, if you don't have this driver installed Hatchy 2 won't work properly. And this should install pretty fast, and as soon as it does, it's automatically going to start dumping that kernel. And this driver is designed for Windows, so if you're trying to use this on another operating system, it's probably not going to work. And when you're dumping that kernel, it could take up to 3 minutes, but I'm going to go ahead and fast forward everything so I don't bore you to death. And you might get a message like this saying NB5 checksum is unknown, and I just go ahead and click yes to continue. Now it's giving me a message saying my kernel has been dumped to a folder named dump inside the hackg 2 folder. And that's going to be right here. So if we open that up, that is going to be my original kernel. So what we want to do is go ahead and copy that. I'm going to go ahead and paste that to a safe directory. I'm going to go ahead and paste that on my desktop for now. And I'm going to rename it to dump keep. Now this is your original kernel, so you want to make sure this stays nice and safe. If for some reason anything happens to your Nintendo and you need to get back to its original state, this is the file you're going to need. So just make sure this is in a safe place. All right, the next step is going to be to click on that kernel tab again. And now we're going to flash the custom kernel. So when we click on this, we're going to get a message saying, do you want to flash the custom kernel? Yes, we do. And this also might take up to three to five minutes, but I have fast forwarded through this part. Once done, a message will pop up saying done, and you can upload games to Nintendo. And now notice at the bottom, we have a green light and it's also showing our memory. So we have 322 megabytes available. So our console is now modded to be able to install games, but if for some reason you want to go ahead and uninstall everything and get it back to its original state, you want to go up to this kernel tab then click on uninstall, then follow all the prompts. And after you're done going through the uninstall process, it's going to ask if you want to flash the original kernel back. Then you'll click on that. Then your Nintendo will be back to its original state. So that's just for your information, just so you know. 
So now it's time to add some games and locate on my computer. I do have the full set of Nintendo games and these are in archive format. And you can also add games that are not archived. They just need to be in a .NES format. So I've selected 790 games that's located on my computer and now I'm gonna drag these over to Hack-Chi and drop them right here. So when you add this many games, you might run into a couple conflicts like right here. It's asking, do you want to patch Zelda's Revenge? So just go ahead and check yes for all. And if you get any other conflicts, just go ahead and select yes for all. So if you're looking for Nintendo games, I cannot provide any links, but I would recommend just using Google and search NES ROM sets, and that'll get you in the right direction. So depending on how many games you're trying to add, it may take a while. Once you have all your games added to Hack Chi, you can download some box art if you choose. So with all these games here, I have selected highlighted in blue. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and then select download box art for selected games. Now this step did take the longest. It took about 20 minutes because I was trying to find artwork for about 790 games. So downloading the box art is not necessary, but it sure looks a lot better. And notice now the memory is at 133 megabytes out of 322. So I still have a little bit of memory left over. So at this point, if all you wanna do is just play Nintendo games, then we don't have to go any further. All we have to do is click synchronize selected games at the bottom. And as far as the settings go, I'm not gonna mess with anything, but you do have some options. But if you're a beginner, I would not recommend messing with any of these settings. I would just leave them the way they are until you get some games up and running. And I do have a guy that kind of explains this a little bit more on how to make custom folders. And that is for the Super Nintendo Classic Edition. But that same guide will also work for the Nintendo Classic Edition. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add RetroArch so I can play games from systems like the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this archive right here and drag this over to the Hack Chi and drop it right here. Now a window should pop up asking which modules I wanna install. And it's already pre-checked a bunch of them, so you can just leave it the way it is, or select just the emulators you want. And on each of these, if you highlight it, it gives a description of what it is. You got one for Final Burn Alpha, you got one for Nintendo 64, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, and Atari. Just to name a few of them here, and I'm just gonna select all the ones that were already pre-checked. So when I click on OK, it's gonna prompt me to this menu, and it's asking me to put it back into FEL mode. So I'm gonna hit the power button on my Nintendo, and wait for that red light to turn off. Then go ahead and unplug it, then plug it right back in. Now I'm gonna hold that reset button, then push power, let go, and then continue to hold the reset for about five seconds. Now it's back into FEL mode. And as soon as it's in FEL mode, it's automatically gonna start installing RetroArch along with the emulators. So anytime that prompt comes up to get into FEL mode, you just do that same process. Now I'm gonna add some Super Nintendo games that's located on my computer. I'm just gonna add 21 games just for a test here. And this is the same 21 games that's on the Super Nintendo Classic Edition. And after adding these games, all the games should be highlighted in blue. So if you just wanna right click on those, you can download the box art form if you want to. And when you're a beginner with RetroArch, I'd recommend just starting with one system and just adding a couple games and make sure you get those up and running before you try to do anything else. And something else I'd like to mention, the way I'm doing this today is just gonna mix in your Super Nintendo games with your Nintendo games. If you wanna separate the systems, then you're gonna to have to make custom folders and I will have a video down below that talks about how to do the custom folders if you're looking to do that. So now it's time to synchronize the selected games and when I click this button, all the games that are checked on the left are gonna load onto my Nintendo Classic Edition. And once again, this may take a while, it just depends on how many games you're trying to add. Once you're done, you're gonna get a prompt that says wow, you'll select okay. And now you're gonna wait for the green dot to turn red. Once it turns red, we can go ahead and turn off your Nintendo Classic Edition and wait for that red light to turn off. If for some reason it doesn't turn off, just give it 30 seconds and if it's still on, it should be safe to unplug it. Now if everything went well, I should now have a bunch of games on my Nintendo Classic Edition. So all the extra games are gonna be in subfolders in alphabetical order. So now I have a total of 841 games installed on my Nintendo Classic Edition, with 21 of those being Super Nintendo games. And inside of each folder, there's gonna be 30 different games. So most of the artwork's gonna be good to go, but there is gonna be some artwork that's off especially when you're adding over 800 games. And that can be corrected inside Hatchi. The next time you go to use it, instead of right clicking on the games, you can just go over here and select Google, and that'll bring up an internet window where you can select the appropriate box art. Also, I'd like to mention the next time you wanna add some games, you don't have to do all the steps again. You don't have to mess with the kernels or anything. All you have to do is put your Nintendo into FEL mode, add some games to Hatchi, and then synchronize the games. And remember, whatever games are checked on the left of the screen inside Hack Chi are the ones that are gonna install on your Nintendo. So most of your games should run just fine, but you might run into a few games here and there that don't work. And a lot of times that can be corrected just by searching for a different version of the ROM online. 
Also, you want to keep in mind if you're playing games for other systems like the Super Nintendo, the Nintendo controller will not work very well because it's only a four button controller. So there is a couple options. You can get an aftermarket controller or you can use a Super Nintendo Classic Edition controller or you can use a Wii Classic controller, which is probably one of my favorite controllers to use. And the great thing about the Wii Classic controller is that if you push the home button, that acts like the reset button on the Nintendo, so you never have to get off your butt again. But I would recommend getting some cable extensions so you don't have to sit quite so close to your console because it's only a three foot cord. All right, well, hopefully this guide helped you out. And if you have any questions, you can leave some comments down below. And I'll try to help you out the best I can, but sometimes I do get just a little bit busy. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click that like button. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe. And if you want to help support the channel, you can now find me on Facebook and Patreon. Have a great day, and I'll see you later.